good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for giving me the opportunity to make this presentation. Uh, so, today I'm going to talk about some of the results that we obtained when we, got, when we test uh, some parameter models uh, with cosmological data. So, uh, the presentation is based on this work, so please uh, check the reference if you want to know the details. Okay, so uh, let me start by talking about the Lensky anomaly. We have heard about the Lensky anomaly and about the free gravitational anomaly, but so I'm just going to say a few things. I mean, uh, the, the path of the CMB photons is bent uh, by the gravitational potential generated by the matter distribution uh, on the way to us. And, uh, and we know uh, this phenomenon predicted by general relativity as free gravitational lensing. So, uh, therefore, it's a prediction of the standard model, and we have to include it in our analysis when we compute the lens uh, CMB power spectrum. So, we can test the goodness of this uh, prediction with the plan data, and the result that we obtain is that it turns out that uh, the amount of lensing uh, that we observe uh, is greater than the amount of lensing uh, predicted by the standard model. So uh, we can look at different uh, solutions for this uh, lensing anomaly. And here uh, I'm just going to focus on two of the most uh, studied ones. Uh, the first one is related with the curvature parameter. Uh, the fact that the, almost the same uh, CMB temperature and polarization spectra can be predicted uh, with different combinations of cosmological parameters points out to a uh, degeneracy between uh, those parameters. In particular, if you uh, consider the curvature parameter, you are dealing with a, a geometrical uh, degeneracy. This means that uh, I mean, it would be desirable to have a higher value for the non-relativistic uh, mass parameter in order to enhance uh, the bending uh, of the photons. But uh, to do so, we need uh, a negative value for the curvature parameter. This uh, shifts the position of the acoustic peaks, which is not something welcome. But we can amend this by uh, reducing the value of the H0 uh, parameter. Okay. So uh, the second one is a phenomenological approach. Uh, it um, it involves this phenomenological parameter, which is introduced uh, in order to rescale the gravitational potential power spectrum. So, if we have a value greater than one, then uh, you have more lensing than what is predicted by the model. And of course, for AL, the lensing parameter equals to one, you recover the theoretically uh, predicted value. So, uh, if we want to compute the CMB uh, anisotropy spectra, uh, we need to consider a uh, primordial power spectrum. So, in this work, we consider four of them. Uh, the first one uh, is obtained in a non slow roll uh, spatially flat inflation model. Uh, it is the one assumed in the standard model of cosmology. And uh, it is parameterized by the amplitude of the power spectrum and by the uh, spectral limits. <coughs> the second one is obtained uh, in a very, in a very uh, slow roll inflation. So this means that the power low part that we observe here uh, is not relevant compared to this part. So we have no time. <coughs> the thing is that this model uh, doesn't properly fit the CMB data is strongly disfavored according to the statistical criteria. So, uh, this means that we need uh, the tile. So, if we want to consider both options, curvature and, and the teal, we can uh, assume this phenomenological expression for the primordial power spectrum, uh, which recover the, the limit uh, of the first power spectrum by setting the curvature parameter as equal to zero, and the untitled case uh, by uh, putting NS equal to 1. Okay, we call this uh, power spectrum the plan power spectrum because it's the one that uh, this collaboration uh, uses in their analysis. 
And finally, we have this uh, new power spectrum, uh, which, uh, I mean, the, the function A uh, varies its expression depending on if we, we, would, we want to consider a closed or an open universe. Um, we shall see in a moment the expression, the analytical expression for this uh, power spectrum, which is theoretically motivated. Um, all of the power spectrums are renormalized, are normalized in such a way that uh, when the wave number is equal to the pivotal scale, we recover the amplitude for the uh, prime model power spectrum. Okay. So as I said, uh, this is the complicated expression for this new power spectrum. This is the Planck mass and normalization constant, and this is the gamma function. And as you can see here, uh, the dependency of the spectral index is uh, encoded in this uh, parameter. Okay? So this is just for the closed case, but if you check the reference, uh, and also, sorry, this one, you know, if you want to know how to derive this uh, model power spectrum, you are going to find also the expression for the uh, open case. Right, so uh, now, Let's have a look at the results that we get uh, when we test uh, the theoretical predictions of the of those models with the uh, Planck uh, temperature and uh, polarization data. For the sake of simplicity, here I just show the most uh, relevant parameters for the discussion, but um, we can we can find the constraints in the in the reference. Okay, so. Uh, as we mentioned, we obtain very high values for the omega parameter. This means that uh, these models that have an extra degree of freedom can deal with the lensing uh, anomaly by increasing this parameter expected. So this means that we have some evidence uh, for a closed universe. This was already noted in previous references. Uh, and also, we obtain uh, very low value for the H plus parameter. So of course, uh, this is the geometrical, the geometrical degeneracy coming into play. But uh, <coughs> we do see a clear reduction in the values of the minimum, in the minimum value for the key square function. This is also reflected in the value for the DLC criteria, or the differentials are defined in this way. So this means that these models the curvature model are uh, strongly favored to be compared with the flat lambda CDM model. So, what about the uh, second option, uh, the introduction of this phenomenological parameter? Uh, we observe that uh, the values for the omega parameter and the H naught uh, doesn't change don't change too much with respect to the previous case without uh, this parameter. But the fact of having more a value greater than one uh, allows the model to reduce the model of the key of the value of the key square function. And the DAC criteria tells us that this model is on the verge of being uh, strongly favored over the flat and CDM model. Uh, what about the, the non-flat models? Well, uh, as expected, if we introduce an extra degree of freedom, uh, the, geometrical, the geometrical degeneracy gets even worse. We obtain very good values for the omega matter and the H naught. Um, but yeah, they are also equal with respect to the flat uh, model. So far, uh, we haven't taken into account the uh, lens, the plan lensing likelihood, which is obtained from our reconstruction of the gravitational potential. Uh, and its inclusion in the analysis uh, brings important uh, changes in the, in the result. It breaks partially this degeneracy. Uh, it reduces the evidence in favor of curvature and also the lensing parameter, and none of the models is uh, strongly followed. Uh, now it is time to include in the analysis some non CMB data. Uh, we consider a compilation made of by BAO uh, from isotropic and isotropic observables. 
large scale structured data, supernova, and also cosmic rocks. So if we have a look uh, at the results that we obtain when we analyze, when we join and analyze this data set, the first thing that draws our attention is that the evidence in favor of curvature uh, has completely disappeared. Uh, the minimum value for the key square is almost the same that for the flat on the CDM. So this means, of course, that they are no longer favor. Actually, it is the flat on the CDM model, the one that is preferred for the two statistical criteria. On the other hand, we observe that the lensing parameter is greater than 1 by 3.3 sig. Uh, so while when we were using only the E18 data, both options were favored. Now we observe that only the second one is. We, we need to know that uh, the omega and parameter uh, plays a role at uh, early times and also late times. But uh, the lensing parameter only has an impact on the uh, CMB data. So <coughs> large and negative values are uh, necessary to deal with the lensing anomaly, but these values are not supported neither by the lensing data nor by the non-CMB data. So clearly something is going on. Uh, there is some tension between high resin data and low resin data. And in order to, well, first of all, let, let us see this in a more visual way. Uh, for the Planck uh, power spectrum model, we observe that in some of the panels, uh, the contour plots are not non overlapping even at two sigma. Okay, so this is just a reflection of the tension that we have just mentioned. And if we look at the contour plots for the new power spectrum, we realize that we get overlap at two sigma. So even if the tensions are still there for the new power spectrum model, but they are less severe if we compare with the planned uh, power spectrum. Okay, so if we want to properly test the tension between uh, two data sets in the context of a given model, we can use some uh, statistical estimators. Here we consider two. Uh, this, uh, this estimator is built in such a way that when we have positive values for this estimator, it means that the data sets are mutually consistent, whereas for negative values, they are inconsistent. And also applying the Jeffries scale, uh, we can classify these, uh, these levels of, uh, of tension. Okay, the second one is, uh, it requires a computation of the suspicious length parameter. We have uh, looked at this this morning. And also the Bayesian dimensionality. And uh, we can uh, obtain this expression for the probability that tells us uh, the probability that two sets being consistent by chance. Also, if we consider an analysis with it, yes. That, that uh, the Bayesian normal dimensionality, which, which one is that? Well, it's a parameter definitely in this reference. Please check it. I didn't put this right here. Oh, you didn't define? No, not here, not here, sorry. Can you say something about it? Uh, well, actually, I don't remember the exact details. I just said, uh, uh, just know that you have to build this uh, function in order to obtain the probability, but I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the details. Uh, so, yeah, by considering a Gaussian analogy, you can transform this probability in a sigma tension. Uh, so, more or less, we, we can say that we obtain a model tension for two sigma and a strong tension for three sigma. So uh, let's just uh, quickly see at the two most important cases here. Uh, we clearly see that for the black power spectrum model, we obtain, uh, according to both uh, estimators, uh, and a strong tension between PAD, PAD data and non-CMB data. Okay, so this tension is it is still there for the for the new power spectrum, but uh, it's, it is less severe. Okay? And, and for the lensing, we also obtain tension. So there is also uh, the tension is, is not so worrisome as the one in the PAT versus non CMB data, but we still have uh, 2.5 or less. 
Okay, so just let me conclude uh, by mentioning the most important things that we have to think. The untitled model is uh, very discovered by the plan data. So this means that we need to consider our spectrum with a tile. Uh, we have observed three sigma tension in some of the results for the plant power spectrum model. The non-flat uh, new power spectrum model does better than uh, the plant power spectrum model accommodating the, these data sets. And finally, we have a remarkable evidence in favor of a value for the lensing parameter uh, greater than one. So this is all I want to say. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, no, in the end, uh, you mean if, if we consider, for instance, we lens in data? Yes. <coughs> yeah, I mean, probably. Can. I mean, uh, I didn't analyze each of the data sets separately, but it seems that the, any low rate data intention with a value for the curvature parameter different from zero. So, probably, yeah, we could do the analysis on frequency data we are going to have. Uh, a great attention. Uh, you come out with for the zero? No, no, I mean, not the nature, zero, right? So we put a zero and a zero. And then, you know, you, you, you get a zero by your two right? And I said, sorry? In your model, you get a zero being different. Yeah, I mean, you mean? What, what is the tension with the of a zero? I don't know, sorry. You mean this model? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't even. I didn't even calculate this. But for this, uh, we didn't consider here in this analysis the H not data. Actually, there is a work. Uh, we have a work in progress, uh, including the new Pantheon compilation. But uh, we need to look at different possibilities, like uh, time evolving dark energy and some kind of this, because the curvature models cannot deal with. Uh, Extension. Yeah. Uh, probably, yeah, I mean, yeah.